Your dark mode sucks because you just invert colors, admit it. Almost 100% of the time you design either on light mode or dark mode. And when you try to do the dark mode or the light mode, you just invert them. And this doesn't work. Now let me show you how to do that. Before we even start to design dark mode, you really need to think of what is your why. Dark modes are helping content and mainly images really stand out. And it's even noticed even more. The more your product features images, consider having dark mode. Now, if you're something that's really content heavy and requires a lot of reading, maybe it's not worth having dark mode. However, let's try and fix this. The first problem with dark mode is that you people either go too hard or too little. And it, call, it all comes down to brightness and contrast. So if we hit I and just see the contrast level, and if you can see on the top right, it's the last digit is eight, that's our brightness. So the background has a value of eight. And our car has a value of 25. Now this is a very big gap. This is a gap of almost 20 points in our brightness, which creates this inconsistent because this element is perceived much brighter than the background itself. Now let's fix this. So the first thing we'll need to fix is our background. So I would advise you to select the background and you can help create multiple ways that you can do it. So considering our main color is this blue, you can just go by zero, zero and our brightness, we would like to be something between 10 and 5% maybe. So let's say seven. So this creates already like a nice um, blue, a nice black, which is not pure black. The second way you can do it is just select pure black, which is zero, zero, zero. But by far my favorite of creating, um, of creating uh, backgrounds is to use a light gradient. So if we come back to 007 and just click on linear and we're just going to drag this on top like this, then we're going to go 007 and go 100. Now this is boring. This doesn't add much. But what we can do here is actually go to the blue tint, move it here and also move the other one here. And we can actually start and move it up a notch. Not this one, sorry, the other one. We can actually move it up a notch. So it introduces this light blue tint uh, in our ways. Another way is if you don't want to have this blue, you can just go the other way and just create this metallic feel to your interface. Now this will add a little bit more spark and it will be a little bit more interesting. And you can also, of course, play with this or you can try a radio. A radio also works really well. Uh, with this, you can adjust it, how bright, how spread out it is, but you get the point. Now that we've picked our background, we're just gonna quickly select our cards, which hold the main color. And as you can see, like our background has, um, uh, a brightness of 16 and our cards has a brightness of uh, 100. So a really, really easy way is like pick your background, click on the panel and just go and play with the brightness. Now, as I told you, like in a previous bad example, we had like a brightness of 25, which was a lot, but what if here we type 25? And you can see it already looks a little bit better, but I'm not entirely happy with this. So an easy way uh, would be to just reduce this brightness a little bit. It doesn't need to be a lot, but something like this, just to make the text, uh, just to make the elements pop off the screen a little bit. The next step is our only thing left in terms of dark mode. It's the navbar. So an easy way is like you can select this, but as you can see, it just doesn't look that good. So maybe you can lower down the opacity to 15. I try to be to make it still visible, but not too visible. Uh, so it's like between 10 and 15% of brightness. So you can quickly see how you can generate this light to dark mode with just a few changes of your brightness levels. And now we've generated a lot of the dark interfaces. 
for the next step, we're just gonna convert all the text uh, to be white and we're gonna focus on the other element. Big mistake with a light and dark interface is just using pure colors. So either that be pure white or that being pure black. So once we select this, also make sure to move it in the right spot. It was 225. We need to play with brightness because we don't want to have like this. Uh, so you can go 80% brightness and you can go like 20% saturation and see how that looks. And you just play with it until it has the en enough contrast for you. So this already looks much better than just having pure white text. And as you can see here, uh, as you can see, we can just select this and just add our colors to it and paste it like that. A few things to note. Once you have those colors, you need to be mindful of if they pack accessibility. So if we just select a quick way to do it, you just select the two colors, match them, go stark, hit tab, and you can just check contrast. In most cases, they don't match them. In this case, it does. If you need to fix them, an easy fix is uh, an easy fixes just to reduce a little bit of the saturation and brightness. So you can go like with 50, and maybe 50 might be a bit too much in this example, but look, you can go 70 and you can just increase the brightness a little bit to make them a little bit washed out. That way they even stand out even more. The same goes for the red. It should follow the same pattern. If, if it's 73, you can go 65 and it's already at 100. And it should always stand out on top of it. Lastly, um, if we want to adjust the grays and the grays on text, again, you can run the same exercise as this and just paste it. You select it, hit command slash, look at Stark, and as you can see, oh, our text doesn't pass. Hmm, I wonder why. Because again, what you need to do with this is just select this and you just need to increase the brightness a little bit, maybe by 10 points, and it will already pass everything. Now, one final thing that you can note is shadows. We have a drop shadow here, but if you're looking closely, it's barely even noticeable. What I would advise is 90% of the cases you don't need it. But in case you do, you can actually, the better way is to cast a shadow out of this and just moving the brightness down a notch. So something like 15 and lowering this, because this would make it look much better. But again, it's such a minor detail that most of the people won't even notice it. So sometimes it's not even worth having a drop shadow on a dark UI. Now, the very important thing is that on dark interface, you should focus on readability of the text because it's a little bit harder and it's much tougher on your eyes. Now, this is an easy way to go from dark, from light mode to dark mode within a few clicks. If you just follow these patterns and just go and experiment, it shouldn't be a problem anymore consistent creating consistent patterns.